Hello and welcome to the Syndicate of Star Wars Podcast. I'm your host, Ronan Chain, and this is the first episode of the year 2024. So happy New Year's to everybody. Hope you had great celebratories. Uh, I have someone who I've seen his reactions and videos for a while concerning Star Wars, and I respect, respected him from afar. And he was very uh, 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 gracious and sweet to invite me on uh, Council of Creators, which you can watch every Wednesday on his channel. But I have Chainsaw Reacts on the Syndicate podcast. So Chainsaw, Hello. how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? What's up? I'm, I'm good, man. I was like, after the first time I was in your podcast, I'm like, okay, now we have to balance out. You got to be in my podcast, and then <laughs> I got to work the schedule around for you to be in Bottles and Bricks as well and whatnot. Okay. Um, we got at least two big annou- announcements or either confirmations that – a, we're getting a Mando and Grogu movie, and B, Ahsoka season two has been is in development and it's going forward. This was a bit of shocker, yet I wasn't surprised because I had heard a while back that there was a movie in development. People were like, "No, no way, we're getting a season four. Favreau already said we're getting a season four, which we still are. But this seems to be the the, the main thing that's going in production this year, and uh, when. Either or will be coming out. Who knows yet? But the fact is that we are getting this done. Um, first of all, I love this concept art. I love it to death. Ryan Church is a master. Um, I've been almost bugging him on Instagram to be like, please sell these as prints. And, you know, it's, it's a whole look of something they have to go for it. Um, and I know we talked a little bit on your stream, but when you see this image, when you, when you saw that announcement, were you excited? Were you pumped? Were you apprehensive? Or were you where were you at with the state? Um, I'm ha- I'm happy with this. I'm happy that we're getting this. Um, I didn't believe the rumor for quite a while. Like I was like, no, this isn't true. No, no. But I'm happy that we're getting it because hey, at least we're getting, you know, a film that I think will be successful in terms of box office if it's a good story. My question is, what is the story though? The way season three Mandalorian ends, they're kind of hanging out in the house, just kind of like, okay, we got a house now. Cool. Where do we go from here? Is it like, does this have Thrawn in it? Right. Does this set up any first order stuff? Does this set up sub like is Sabine, not Sabine. Well, no, not Sabine, but like, um, oh God, what's her name? Bo, Uh, the armor. Bo Gatan. Yes. That's what I was thinking. (laughs) Sabine. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) Is, I'm assuming Bo Katan's gonna be in it. I'm guessing. I'm guessing the Mandalorians are gonna. I, I don't know, right? But yeah. like, if the, because the movie you have to have a not like an over the top end of the galaxy scale story, but I would assume when you're doing a Mandalorian Grogu movie, you're gonna have those characters. Oh, I froze, didn't I? <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Oh, oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Um, but I I think you're gonna have those core characters outside of the two of them in mm-hmm. this movie in some capacity. Or else it's going to be seen as, oh, you just took the two characters from Mandalorian and then left everybody else in TV. Like, bring them over into the film side, you know? Because if, if if they are doing season four after this at some point, then if you exclude them from the movie and bring it back for season four, then then what was the movie? Like, what was the point of the movie besides, oh, we just want to capitalize on the both of them and, yeah. and exclude everybody else? Like, the show was successful because of all these elements that made yeah. the show work besides them too. So, yeah, I'm, I, I understand where you're coming from and I agree to a lot of the terms. I, I'm pumped for it just because I'm like, okay, well, after what we bookend with season two, we saw what we did with season three and how I felt that some of the choices overall weren't the best. Yet, uh, again, I'm not crying over it. I'm not losing sleep over it. But I'm like, I think a movie is a fresh thing that I'm like, okay, if this uh, if it's a good enough story that uh, you do do it in two hours and you don't have to drag it, you don't have to, I can't drag it, you don't have to split it up in four parts and eight parts yeah. over a whole month or two and us. And then mm-hmm. I'll be like, so they went to a, a diner for four weeks. We have to spend, we have to see them go through a diner, then go to a side quest to find a specific currency and then go to another side quest to buy a certain plate and fork to eat the dining one night. Like what? And so I, my, to me, the big thing was like, okay, cool movie. It's been a while since I've seen a star Wars movie. Cool. I'm in there. 
My funny enough, my main concern thing was like, okay, the story that we're gonna get, and also the budget. Okay, I feel yeah. that the story should be very simple, yet be a pivotal thing in the the, the long term story from where we started back in 2019 with the first season, and yet it's gonna be a tough thing. And yet it should be a, a, a good enough one off story, yet be connected if you followed it. For the general audiences, my thing is that a lot of people still haven't seen the Mandalorian yet. Mm-hmm. A lot of people won't commit to it, Star Wars thing. But they see movie in Star Wars. That's a big thriving thing, regardless of how you felt of the past three, four, five, six films. Um, and I feel that if it's simple, and if you hide stuff or you put stuff in the as background, not foreground, for us fans, I think I'll be okay with it. I would love to see Katie Sarkov, bo in the movie. And yet, I feel that unless they play it right, it could be one of the things that, like, if you didn't see the past two seasons, if you haven't seen Clone Wars or you haven't seen Rebels, you'll be lost over it. Now, granted, one could say, well, they've had time to watch it. There's Disney Plus going forward. It's the same same way I feel about how... Uh, the adaptation of Last of Us came about with HPL, where it's like there's people that will never pick up a controller for a PlayStation system and play the game. Somehow, yet we were able to bring that story to audiences in a new, fresh way. Mm-hmm. And I feel that apart from story and apart from connectivity, I've heard slash seen the budgets for the previous big blockbuster films, specifically from from Disney. And I'm of the mind, and again, I'm saying this as a fan, as a cinephile, not 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 a professional or a critic and all that stuff. I'm saying is this that like, if you telling me you can make a Star Wars movie for a hundred million dollars or less, which I would dare you make it for for less than that, because an episode of Mando costs what twenty maybe twenty five million dollars, and it's you feel the size, you feel the, yeah. the, the epicness, yeah. That will be a big swing in a good direction, in my opinion, to tell these stories. Um, a cool fun, I don't know if you know about this, but Godzilla minus one, the big thing that's taking the, the planet by storm, people are digging the movie and whatnot. Dave Filoni had a screening of that movie for Lucasfilm, brought the director on board uh, uh, to have a Q&A. The director said that he's a big Star Wars fan, that he would one day would love to receive a call and whatnot. So... I like the fact that maybe we could take the concept, and again, it's a different country, Japan, of making a blockbuster movie for $15 million, $20 million, and yet you feel the epicness. Yet you can still tell a, uh, uh, a simple story, yet connect new audiences, and yet b- give big smiles to those of us who have been following these characters for a while now. How do you feel about... The, the idea of a simple story and the budget being low than what the standard is for the past few years. It's got to be lower. It's got to be. I mean, you're going to be lucky if it's a hundred million, <laughs> it's probably going to be higher, but, <laughs> but to your point that I, that you made about the story and that there's people who've never seen Mandalorian. That is true. There are people who have never seen uh, the show I, I'm surprised because I mean it's readily available. There's over 200 plus million people who subscribe to Disney Plus, so a lot of people have at least checked it out. But there's probably Star Wars fans who probably never did. Whatever they just watch the movies, they don't know whatever, or they don't. They just don't really pay attention or care. Right. So, I think the movie has to do a couple things. If you're going to have Bo-Katan and other elements in it that make it feel like a Mandalorian continuation from the show to film. You need to have certain little bits of dialogue or information that is said so it's very clear what's happening so that we obviously know that's Grogu and that's Mando. But they might have a character early on, say like the opening five minutes of the movie, where the say Mando and Grogu are out somewhere on a planet and someone goes, what's that thing? And Mando's like... That's 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 a, that that's my little youngling or that's Grogu or something. Or maybe he's meeting somebody he knows... And then he just says, this is Grogu. Like they've never met Grogu before. Like there's like quick little dialogue to make it very clear what's going on. Maybe in the first 10 minutes you show Grogu using the force. So that's out of the way. We know that's happening. Just small little details. 
I think John Favreau directing makes a lot of sense since he created this whole well world in quotes because he didn't create Star Wars, but he created yeah. this and started this whole movement of what they're doing now with uh, the Mando verse side of Star Wars in this timeline. Um, I don't know what story you tell though. I think you're right though on the simpler side in terms of like not too complicated because if you can make it too complicated and people are like, I've never seen. Mandalorian, so I can't keep up with all this nonsense you're throwing at me. Like Mandalorians, and what's <laughs> happening here? So I get that point, um, yeah. but it's got to be bigger in scale to justify it being a film, mm -hmm. or it's going to be seen as oh, it's just a throwaway larger story they wanted to make into a longer episode of Mandalorian. They threw it up in theaters. It's yeah. got to feel bigger. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's 150 million budget, depending on how big of a scale yeah. they're going to take this movie. Yeah. And it's I, gonna be weird because if it if it looks too good, it's gonna be like, this is definitely not the Mandalorian show. This looks so much better. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's another issue too. They got to worry about. It's a double edged sword. Yeah, I, I, yeah, man, yeah. And in terms of what we think could be, I, what would you? I think what would you be your guess? Best guess be the store because my story would be that it's again. If you haven't seen Mandalorian, I guess spoilers for this. But at the end of season three. Uh, Mando reunites with an acquaintance of his that he's been bumping into for the for uh, a, a season and a half, in in the sense of Captain Carson Tava, and at at the very end of season three, he comes back to him and tells him, uh, you know, thanks man for helping out. And he's like, listen, uh, I'm a bounty hunter. This kid is officially he's my my uh, my youngling. He, he's I'm looking after him, so I got to be very picky of my choosing missions. I need, I got to make a living. I'm proposing that you and I team up. You hire me, and I choose selective stuff to keep the outer rim protective for on behalf of the New Republic. And he and he has his way of being like, hey, hey I'm not going full blue, but y'all can't keep track of everything that's going out beyond Coruscant and whatnot. So I'm good with a gun, and I'm good at flying. Hire me and whatnot, and there's a Ooh. good bit of like I'll think about it. It's like you already did. We're gonna work together. Whatnot. Yeah, you keep it hush hush <laughs> and whatnot. It's very. I told uh, Jamie from Holland and Marauder. So I'm like, it, it felt it was like Batman and Gordon right out of the mm -hmm. comics, right out of the cartoon, yeah. right out of the movies. It was just like put the back signal. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. I feel that's what's gonna happen. What do you What do you think is gonna happen with this story? I think you're right. I think they might go that route. Um, I think when you mention Outer Rim. I'm thinking that maybe there's something out there that that the, we're not aware of, that they're not aware of, and maybe it's a new type of villain that could be a, an actual threat to the galaxy. May, maybe, starting this out there, maybe it's somebody who's trying to basically, who wants to come out from hiding, not saying that's an old character, but some force user that wants to take over the reins of what Palpatine left. Well, left. So maybe it's something like that. Because yeah. if it's a force user, Grogu's can help with that. Right? And depending on let's say this person has an army, has people that are supporting this person trying to start an uprising in the outer rim to take over kind of the remnants of the Empire then you have Mando fighting these guys. You have Grogu have to take on this kind of force user that's trying to rise. Just, it's possible. I don't know if they would do that, but you said Outer Rims, and like that was like a, a point, because I forgot about that conversation, but if that was specifically his kind of viewpoint is to help with the Outer Rim stuff, it would make sense that maybe it doesn't it doesn't reach the, this far inland, inland to where we are. Because obviously we're in a time period we've never really visited before. Yeah but maybe the threat gets taken out so that we never really hear about it. But we get to see at one point, this individual tried to take control of the empire remnants and trying to take control of what that was and never got to succeed. Cause Grogu stepped in because Mando stepped in, you know, I like oh. that. It's almost like a mystery. It, it's, it's mm -hmm. a one-off story. Yep. And yet, and for general audiences, they'll be like, all right, we stopped this, this bad guy thing, but it's just the beginning. And it's breadcrumbs that leads into an, uh, another show that we'll talk about pretty soon. That leads up to the big Filoni. Yeah. I'm calling it now the infinity war end game. Air to the empire. Yeah. Air to the empire. Yeah. Be like, all right, that's where everybody teams up. Yep. And it's like, we got to 
deal with this before it gets out of hand. And maybe, um, maybe the end of the movie tees up uh, Thrawn. Dude, I, 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 again, this is a deep cut for folks who, 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 who don't are familiar with it. But there was this, there was these, this race of species that Grand Admiral Thrawn, who's the big antagonist of Ahsoka series and Rebels and the old uh, uh, sequel books and whatnot, EU. Yeah. There was this species that Thrawn was afraid of and was the reason why he had joined the Empire to become militant about it. And this species was called the Yvonne Song. And it's... Yes. To yes. put it in terms, it was space Vikings. Yep. Or space orcs and whatnot. So, and they are brutal. <laughs> brutal. And yes. so I would not be surprised if maybe we dive deep into that. Again, it could be... It's, it's a one-off story, but for gen- general audiences... But for us who keep a lookout on the background or hear exposition or hear dialogue, it could be just another thread of like, this is where we're going. This is just the beginning of what's coming down the path. The update was from THR. And again, this could be very well be true and it could be changed. And yet, um, again, just reporting what we're getting, but that the movie is a priority that happened during the strikes that... If it's successful, why not? It could be the beginning of more than just a, a spinoff, one-off film. And I liked that Dave Filoni is helping out writing the script and that it's already set in stone that this movie is not season four. Scripts for season four were already written, but where that goes in one eye is unclear. I don't know how you felt about it, but I always felt that when Dave and Favreau were writing something or were bouncing off each other in terms of writer director director writer that it was always gold i mean you look back even at the penultimate episode of season three i think where you see or not it was in the penultimate episode but there was an episode in season three where it said uh written by john favreau and dave filoni and it was a banger i think it might have been the penultimate episode and it was just like whenever these two mix it up they bring the best of what they both can bring from the individual side you bring the flair that John has with creating the man, the TV show or co-creating it. And then you bring the depth and knowledge that they've had since starting a Lucasfilm. So are you confident being like, all right, I'm glad that at least Dave is a part of it. He's still developing a silk, yeah. which we'll get to, but mm-hmm. I'm glad that he's still intact with that. Oh yeah. He needs to be. And I think he might be attached because of some thread stuff that needs to be there to set up air to the empire. I'm thinking maybe Um, because I believe he wrote all of Ahsoka. I think he wrote all of it. He wrote all of Ahsoka. So so I think he's probably tying in some stuff that's leading into the next thing. Ahsoka season two, Thrawn, Air of the Empire, all that. Uh, But also just general, like he's been there since like day one of working on this show. So it makes sense just at the end of the day, him to be there. In terms of the other thing, in terms of sequel films, if this is successful, I think that might scrap season four if this is a big hit because let's say they make this thing for 130 150 million in between there if this movie makes seven eight hundred million they're gonna make they're gonna stick with movies right because because the, the problem is with disney plus yes they're earning monthly subscribers they're earning a certain revenue they are earning merchandise money but what's really the thing that really makes them money box office films and if this if this th- if it hits now, if they make this thing for 150 million and it doesn't crack 500 million, they're not doing it again. They're probably not going to do it again. It's it really has to hit. Yeah. It really it really has to be successful. Yeah, for it to work. So, it's it's a gamble for them, right? They're very popular characters. It's a very popular show. But. Is it going to translate the film? Because like you said, and I really didn't think about it too much, but you, you made a good point. Not everybody's seen the show. Or if they have, they're not caught up with it. A lot of people dropped off from season three and didn't yeah. finish it or didn't even watch it because they heard it wasn't that great. And there was a huge you know, time between season one and season two, season two and season three release. Yeah. So that that hurts it too. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Um but speaking of connecting thoughts or connecting stuff that had been previously done, um, it's weird how this played out. But we got the concept art of the, of the movie. And in the article of it, it was like, oh, by the way, 
Ahsoka season two is in production now. What are, I don't know like, why they what? did that. I don't know why they played it. It should be a separate thing, thing. right? Yeah. yeah. Which, thankfully, the following day, I believe, we got this image, which is pure Dave Filoni sketch. And I wish I could own this piece of art. And it basically <laughs> says the story continues, and it's the uh, big finger pointing west, and you have two figures that liken to Sabine Wren and Ahsoka Tano figures going in that direction. Oh, that's R2-D2 and C-3PO. What are you talking about? Oh, man. My, my, oh, my eyesight's going away. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, fuck yeah. Hell yeah, man. Um, I... Oh, man. I love the Ahsoka, man. It, in, hind, in hindsight, it wasn't perfect, and yet it... it, it it, it never led on it to me. In my opinion, I like the, the finale. I don't love it, but damn it, man. The, the moments of just training, the moments of you see Ahsoka going from her, her very dark costume that we've seen since Mando season two yeah. to the Ahsoka, the white costume that had been teased to us since Rebels. Yeah. That, that, that season again, not perfect yet special, man. It was, it was. That it was Filoni's episode from season two, but that up to eleven, it was mystic as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know what that finger is. We 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 know what that that's implying, um, folks. There's uh, a lot of well. Okay, what do you think it's pointing to? <laughs> that's the, so <laughs> everyone has. Everyone has the same theory, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. So, so we'll also I'll say what what it what I think is point to after we say this. So, folks, I'm not gonna put up the image just because it, it's too big. again, literally and figuratively, it's too big of a thing. But know this that Star Wars, you got the Jedi, you got the Sith, you got the Force, you got the non Force, you got the Rebels, you got the Imperials, you got the people in the middle who are caught in it. And then in the animated show, I don't even call it animated show, the, the, the show Clone the Wars, show. Mm-hmm. they took some swings. Uh, George Lucas and company with what they were willing to tell in those stories. And one of the stories they told in that was the Mortis trilogy, which is a psychedelic space psychedelic where Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ahsoka Tano go to basically another realm in, in this a universe in the the world of, of star Wars. And they meet these gods that symbolize the light and dark side of the force, and then you see the father who balances it out. Um, very deep, weird stuff that was practically never touched on again until Rebels in the World Between Worlds, and we saw some paintings and whatnot. Yeah, and it was so weird leading into Mando that the Mortar Gods had gone way beyond my head. I'm like, that I'm like, where is that gonna be? And next thing you know, we see Balin Skull. Uh, standing over that finger, and you see the statues up on a mountain of the Mortis gods, and you're going, "What the fuck does this mean? We're in another galaxy, and the Mortis gods and the Mortis gods have a presence here. Mm-hmm. How big, how small, who knows? But it has a presence here. And we see um, Ray Stevens and may he rest in peace, Balin Skull, uh, going, po- seeing the way the way that the, the, the ladies are there, and they see this. What I see, and you can tell me if you saw it differently, a flickering light out it's a, in, in it, the yeah, it's a, it's a light, yeah. What was teased, either officially, unofficially, was that there was another mythological figure in the Mortis Gods, and which was the mother, which had become prior to the sun, the, the, the dark side of, of the forest, the, the embodiment of the forest, dark side, and had been cast out. I feel that's what's been drawing Balin Skull, and that's where Ahsoka and Sabine are stranded on. Any, any, regardless of how big, how small it is, they're in a very powerful setting and potentially dangerous setting, and they have to deal with it. Yeah. How do you feel about this, dude? Because I'm like, wow, man, where are we do, going? Do you have this? an image of this person? Uh, I, I'm gonna look it up right now, see if I can find it. But it's pretty can, easy. But um, yes. I think. What's also very interesting too, mm-hmm. Balin Skull intentionally went to this location, and he's like, "All right, I'm out." And then, what is th- this? Is the beauty of Dave Filoni? He puts out an image of them standing on the finger, pointing, saying the story continues. I'm like, 
because that's that's exactly how season one ends, literally with Ben Skull like staring off. That's not the, the last shot, but it's like very significant. It's like because it, it didn't click to me at first. Those are the Mortis God statues. It didn't click right away. I'm like, what the hell are these statues? And then after watching them, so I'm like, what the fu- what? Those are okay. And then it started to make more sense. Uh, this is the image. This is what I yeah. can find. Yeah. So I am I am ninety nine point nine percent sure that we're the, the reflection is Avaloth. That mm. it's her. It's her prison. Yeah, man. Avaloth. And what my the issue is, there's a lot of questions surrounding it. But I think the biggest thing is that you know they're going to have to recast Balin Skull. Yeah. So whoever takes on the role will probably will have a bit a tall order because my God, Ray Stevenson crushed it. Whew. Every single time he was on screen, he like he literally stole every scene he was in. Like even when he was in scenes with Thrawn, he was better than Thrawn. Better. He was so good. And the fact is, we've never seen his character before. That's the that's the thing that I love most that we've never seen him before, and he yeah. was so good. Um, I really hope that we get tells of the Jedi that maybe have him involved, a younger version of him somewhere. And whoever they cast, I feel like it's going to, it's probably going to take it on knowing the responsibility they have to uphold his character that he created on yeah. screen. Um, but yeah, this is definitely into Abeloth. And I think this is an issue because this realistically should be a story within itself. It doesn't need to be in- included with a Thrawn storyline. Yeah. Dude. But they're included. <laughs> So I'm wondering what, like, is it to where, because, okay, I'm trying to remember in the EU, how does Thrawn get taken out? Is it Luke that takes him out? I can't remember. I, it's been so long since I read those books, but I yeah. believe it was Luke or it was Mara Jade. Uh, deep, but, deep EU fans, uh, forgive us for not yeah, remember. It's been a while, but, but um, again, <sighs> Even when Rebels was occurring, it was like, wow, you finally pulled Thrawn? What does this mean now? Yep. And when you see the bits connected stuff, it's like, this is just, it's, it's a bigger, bigger story that even us fans who are hardcore, it's too hard to contemplate of like, wow, how is that going to make work? Because Thrawn and in, in him himself is already a big deal. I was like, okay, yeah. he is the, de- the most deadliest Imperial you could think of. And yet he's not as... Um, He's not a big of a threat as a god. No. I and that's, oh man, that's, oh my god. I'm not gonna be surprised if the heir to the empire movie Thrawn's center focus, right? We got so man. good, you got Mando, you got all this crazy stuff. And what happens at the end of this movie? Avaloth kills Thrawn. <laughs> Avaloth is actually the not not the like we don't take on Avaloth in the movie. But Abeloth is now here. Yeah. And that's how you end the film. It doesn't end on a good note. Thrawn's dead. Ooh. But now you have a god that was cast out that is the literal darkness is here in our world. And and I'll say this, because I've been saying this, that as, as imperfect the sequel trilogies are, and I like them, but they're not perfect. They're, they're not, you know, there's a lot of issues to them. I've always said that an animated series like Clone Wars would help a lot of the stuff ease in that time period. Yeah. If they they're already throwing us Thrawn, if they throw us the Mortis gods, this will probably if they play it out right, this will make the First Order rise of the First Order again more plausible because our attention is on this, and the Imperial bastards are in the background just be like, okay, let's play this out, and then we'll we'll do Necromancer, we'll do Project Necromancer, see how that how it plays out again. What if I'm just throwing it out there? Yeah. Because they decide let's bring back Palpatine when they shouldn't have. Or if they were, they should have been planned out better. Yeah. But know. what if Abeloth is the reason Palpatine is able to come back? Just throwing it out there. Mm. Just throwing it out there. Because we we as Star Wars fans, a lot of us did not like how they brought Palpatine back. Yeah, it should have been set up in Last Jedi, and then brought in full force Rise Skywalker because that opening scene of Rise Skywalker should be at the end of Last Jedi if you were going to yeah. set up Palpatine, and that's the simplest way to. It. There's many other ways they could have done it better. Yeah, but what if Abeloth 
in Ahsoka season two or something. Goes to that planet. What is it called? Mortis or no one? Mortis. What is um, it? Um, Eos. Yes, yeah, something. Goes to that planet where Palpatine is, and we have Ibn Durman, and we literally have it to where she provides because he's actually going to help her in something that she needs. I don't know, right? To something it, that would help it. I yeah. think if you have this over the top God character, they make a very good point because a lot of people don't know who Abloth is, and I get it. Yeah. Not a lot of people do. Yeah, you make a very good point when you introduce Abloth officially in season two of Ahsoka that this is a God. Mm -hmm. This would help, like please at least some of us. This explains how Palpatine is alive. Yeah, even though he's like on life support, she's the one who actually helps him get to the point where he can clone and all this shit, and the, just just ideas. I li listen. I love E. McDermott. I love E. McDermott. But yeah, just the the, the I remember. I don't know what you yeah, okay, I'll get into it. I remember watching the making of Rise of Skywalker and them saying it took us five minutes to realize, oh, it has to be Palpatine come back. And it's just like, no, no, that, that, that takes the way from the ending of episode it, six. It should have been set up when they were establishing this new trilogy, when they were planning out what the trilogy was gonna be. That they if they had that plan, I would it would be handled better. It yeah. was not planned. It's like, oh, what are we gonna do? Oh, Let's bring it back. <laughs> um yeah, I, I think that that concept, that idea is plausible of making me ease with that notion. And yet the 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 beauty and hard thing that people have to do is that like this has to be its own story. It can't it, it can't, you know, I don't really wanna to be quite frank, I really don't want to hear the word first order. No. And all this. That should be something being played out, or at the very least be whispered, not yelled out out loud. Just um, yell out a new empire. Like don't have yeah, a name something for it. Like that. Yeah, it's a, a new empire. Because what what this saw what this saga the Mando saga, if you will, what it's doing, it has to be its own thing, and yet be like this is the timeline we're messing, and then later on shit goes down. That has to be its own thing for for Ray and Poe and Finn to handle and whatnot. So I want to show you something. Okay. So you see what 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 uh, Filoni drew on that sketch saying we're gonna come back. Yeah, a, a while back, right after after Rebels had ended, he had put up a post saying, "This is not teasing a new project, just revisiting old friends and whatnot." And just he was just showing love to the fans, be like, "Just know, guys, we love y'all." I'm not on social media a lot, but I love you. But here's a little fun sketch I drew for you guys, and whatnot. He drew this sketch years ago. Uh... They're wearing similar clothing, as in that concept art. So I would not be surprised if this image that we have here has to do something with what was already teased in this sketch and whatnot. And Ahsoka hasn't gotten her um, her staff yet. So I don't know if it's retconning or whatnot, but we haven't gotten that yet. What if she gets the staff on the way to... Bro. Bro. I, I don't know. Oh I don't know. Folks, we're going to be wrapping things up, but I also want to bring up one of the images that had been teased at Star Wars Celebration in London this past year. And again, this was just to sell to fans and whatnot, any collectibles and whatnot, but it was this image. It was Guardians of the New Republic. And you have oh. Mando on one side, you have Ahsoka in the middle, and you got Luke on the other side. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, dude. A, I should have bought that print. I don't I've never I seen this. No, dude. Yeah. Wow. This is the closest, either subtle or indirect indication that we're gonna get a moment where it's gonna be like All either Ahsoka or yeah, Ahsoka, Mando, Luke being like, "I got some friends." So do I. He's like, "Luke, what about you? Is it just you and R two? He's like, "Well, I got my my relatives when there, but they're kind of busy. I don't really want to." And they're like. What are we, you know, that's call, heir to the call. empire right there. That's heir to the empire. And again, I want to make this clear because people sometimes when they see these shows and see these videos of whatnot, they get confused and whatnot. I, I want to say this that this is just speculation. I don't run Lucasfilm, Chains doesn't run Lucasfilm. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, this is just speculation, and this is just daydreaming. Some of the stuff may not play out, some of the stuff may play out. All we're putting out here is just, just the potentiality that's here and that the the missed opportunity that would be if we don't get to a vibe like that down the road. Um, I, I think it's going to happen. 
I won't be surprised if it's teased in the marketing for the movie yeah. that they're going to see these three unite. Not like the VVS trailer where you see the th the Trinity at the end of Fighting yeah. Tuesday. Not that. Because you're, yeah. you're, 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 don't spoil it. But maybe hint that they're all going to be standing together. You know? And you know what? I don't even need them in the same room. I I'll, I will need something as simple as as a as a hologram message, and be like be like we need. We need if it's Thrawn in his army, and let's say because when he gets to uh, our galaxy, he's going to recruit more people. You're going to need them all together in person. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to have because you're going to have Mando, Grogu, you're going to have the Mandalorians, you're going to have Bo Katan there, you're going to have Ahsoka, you have Sabine. Hopefully, you're going to have everyone else. We'll see. Maybe even Zeb. <laughs> And you want to have Luke. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know who else. I don't think you bring Leia because I know Leia did some training. They, did, they tried to throw it in the Rise Skywalker. Oh, Leia did some training. I don't think you have Leia there because what they set up with this is that Leia's, you know, what is she? Um, She's the head of the Defense Council. Yeah. So she does not need to be out there on the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need Leia Organa going out there and doing that. But you're probably going to see at least. Ahsoka, Sabine, Bo-Katan, Mando, Grogu, and Luke together. Like, planning out something, planning out the fight, or working together. Or think of the endgame shot, where all those heroes are running at the villains. You're going to probably see something like that. Yeah, man. Maybe not Grogu running with them, obviously, but Grogu is... <laughs> but you're going to have a point where Grogu is going to interact with Ahsoka and Luke again. You're going to have those moments again. Um, maybe Sabine meets Grogu, that'd be amazing. Like, we actually get that little moment, like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, because you thought this would never happen. The idea of like, oh, Grogu and Sabine are gonna meet in person, what? And now they do, like, you're gonna have really cool moments, I think. Um, yeah, because Dave Filoni knows what the fans want, and I think he knows what the fans want, and also to an extent, what the fans need, and that we don't know that we want. That's I true, mean. Too. Yeah, I, I, that's what I, I, I appreciated from Tales of the Jedi, which is like I didn't need to, I didn't think I needed to see how Dooku fell and how much of a, of, of the yeah. lights that he was before yep. he went dark and whatnot. Chainsaw, dude, thanks so much for for uh, joining me on this podcast. Tell the folks where can people find you? Chainsaw reacts. Beautiful. Yeah, I pointed wrong. <laughs> it's okay. see, I'm not used to pointing myself. I'm used to telling everybody else. You everybody tell else. me where you're from. It's like yeah. I'm here. Chainsaw reacts everywhere. Everywhere. Folks, check out his council of creators every Wednesday. It is a ball. It is now a schedule of mine to be like, all right, either I'm at work or getting off work, just like hear where they're going or not and just wait and see where where uh, Chainsaw leading us and then just throw in Gore the movie gun and see what the hell happens afterwards. Yeah, once you throw Gore in, there's no <laughs> there's no Vimer <Vimer> reason. <laughs> as on cue, as I finish the podcast, you wow. jump on, dude. Oh, my fucking God. He now joins in when we just finished it. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, man? <laughs> hey, sorry I'm late. You're good. What's your two cents? What When you heard the news of the Man and Grogu movie and that Ahsoka is getting season two, where are you at right now with those two projects? Um, I'm curious to see how this fits all within Dave Filoni's, like how it's all going to circle back around. Because mm -hmm. we talked about it that, you know, Ahsoka didn't have to necessarily have a second season if Dave Filoni's film was going to kind of progress where the narrative was going to go. So it's kind of like, They've got a plan. I'm more excited than anything that one, of course, we're going to get Ahsoka season two to bridge that gap in between to get them back. But to have, you know, the Mandalorian with Grogu having a movie, I don't know what that means. I don't know which, where, where does that from a narrative standpoint go mm -hmm. when you've got like all mm -hmm. these other threads? Because the truth of the matter is they can go any route they want to. I'm still hoping for a Knights of the Old Republic movie, to be honest with you, but... Yeah. I think more than anything, it's intrigue and excitement to see where they're going to take the narrative to make it go full circle. I feel like they're building towards something, and my hope that it is a later future progression where things could go. Because there's a lot to, to tell, a lot of story to tell in between everything. Oh, Do yeah. you feel you'll be confused by the time you get to season two? Because I remember when season one ended, you were like, dude, we have to talk about this. What did that man? That moment with Bane Skull. What did that man? So when you see this image of Ahsoka and Sabine standing on that, are you like, you kind of get the gist of what we talked to you about about those Mortis gods? Or are you like, all right, I just need to watch Clone Wars by the time that hits? I, I think that for those that aren't going to go back and watch Clone Wars, I think that they have a right 
to progressively show the general audience what that means. Yeah. So if the second season, if the second season kind of lose to what that means, and then you leave that off into a movie, I think that that's the perfect route because people like my wife, they'll never go back and watch <laughs> the Clone Wars series. But she loved Ahsoka, you know what I mean? And she'll watch the Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. but she's not going to go into the in-between threads. I will. I realistically probably will at this point now. I might kind of have to. Um, but I, I think that they have a responsibility to make sure the general audience knows where this, what that actually meant. Um, that's us as critics and influencers are, it's our point to talk about it, but everybody else is just curious about what the heck is that? So yeah. Sam, where can people find you? Oh yeah. You can find me on my social, uh, is super S E L zero three, two zero. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or X or whatnot. Um, but Primarily, most of our content, our interviews, discussions, red carpets, all that jazz is on Team JVS, associated with JVS Media Productions. Currently, I'm looking at the Critics' Choice Awards, hoping that The Last of Us wins Best (laughs) Dramatic Series, but we'll see. Um, But yeah, we've got a lot of content coming, so thank you, uh, Rona, for having me. I'm going to say it now, folks. uh, Stay to the channel. A lot more coverage, Star Wars stuff. I'm going to try to get me and Sam to Japan next year. Uh, Chainsaw, if you could make, I, I would love for, to see you over there as well. If we can make that work, um, I'm very, very hopeful for the future of Star Wars. Uh, till then, folks, may the force be with you, and this is the way. <laughs>